Hi, everybody. Welcome to information session number four. Uh, Samantha and I from here from Exponential Destiny will be taking you through um, some of the final st stretch of this competition. This is somewhat of an inflection point because up until now, as many of you know, actually dating all the way back to, I guess, technically speaking, it was March that we announced the competition, but it was June that we officially launched it in Rwanda. We announced it in Geneva in March. At the both at some ITU UN events. And as all of you know, December 31st was the milestone that we hit in which individual registrants, 1,200 of you up to that point, needed to identify team members, select an SDG, and register as a team, which over 250 of you did so in terms of 250 teams now. And essentially, the next uh, two and a half months, so basically Q1, January, February, and March, is the final period of the competition in which teams will be able to, to submit all of the work that they've been doing since we launched the competition back in back in March. And so on today's call, and then we're having this session again tomorrow for those in a different time zone, our goal here is really to cater to those of you that have signed up as a team. Um, specifically the team leader who's responsible for the team, who submitted all of the email addresses and all the individuals on their team uh, in our team registration process. And ideally, uh, if you follow the email communications we sent out leading to this meeting, it's you as a team lead, and ideally you shared with your team that this meeting was happening, so they're joining as well. This will all be recorded and put on our YouTube channel, so you'll also have it as a reference. So what I'd like to do in just kind of jumping right into this is, and again, the goal here is to answer questions that you might have. We'll have some open Q&A, but we try to put ourselves into your shoes in terms of what are the things that you're thinking about right now when it comes to this competition, if, especially if you're in it to win it and you've been real serious about it. There's some really important information that I'm sure you'd like to know as far as the judging process, some key dates, et cetera. So we're gonna go through a lot of that today. Let me start off with just a high level. Again, December 31st was the milestone for the team registrations. We had 257 teams. Each team has one to, has two people to six people. March 31st is the final date when teams will take their creations and experiences that they made in VR for their sustainable development goal, and they will submit them officially for the judging and evaluation process. So March 31st is essentially the end of the competition in terms of the uh, development and creation of the experiences. April, May, and June will be when we conduct the judging and evaluation process. We're going to talk about what that entails. We'll also discuss why it will take, why we feel like we need two or three months to do that. Obviously, if you have 257 teams, um, there's a lot of experiences to go through. July and August will be the date that at least 17 finalists from each of the age groups, as you all know, there's a 14 to 8 year old category of competitors, and there's a 19 year old and plus category of competitors. And around July or August is when we plan to notify those teams of, of first of all, if they're a finalist for their SDG. And second, um, the specifics on the Metaverse for SDG Global Summit, where we'll be awarding the cash prizes and giving, um, recognizing individuals for their, for being a finalist. Um, the reason why you see at least 17 finalists and you see 34, which is the two age groups times 17, that's 34. The reason you see plus and at least is because we might identify some honorable mentions. So we are gonna give the top finalists for each SDG, but some of the SDGs had a lot more teams competing than others. So we might find that a particular sustainable development goal had 25 teams competing on it and the top three were all exceptional and hard to decide. So rather than saying we're only gonna give cash prizes to, the, to one team per SDG, we might decide based on the merit that a team, a second or third place finalist within an SDG should get an honorable mention and a runner up prize. And we'll talk more about this as well, but I'm just giving you at a high level. 
Q3 and Q4 is when we're planning with the UN agency, the ITU, to hold an in-person and or a virtual summit in which those finalists will be recognized. They'll be able to demo their experiences and receive their cash prizes award based on the judge's allocation. We'll talk more about that. The reason why you see Q3 and Q4 is we are in discussions right now with the UN agency, the ITU, as well as other agencies. And everybody's very excited about it, um, but we're really, some of it's just logistics. Uh, when is there something happening where we can get space? If we decided to have it in New York at the UN buildings, when can we actually get a venue there to have it there? Do we do it in Geneva? If so, when can we get access to the proper venue? These venues get booked out, as you can imagine, months, if not years in advance. So some of the timing of the actual summit really only has to do with internally Exponential Destiny, the nonprofit, and the ITU agency of the UN. We have calls every two weeks and we discuss what is the optimal venue? Where should we have it? Should we have it in multiple venues? Um, It'll all be virtual as well. We'll have a metaverse platform in which people can participate from around the world. Um, there's a chance that we only have it virtually for a variety of reasons. If we don't get the proper venue or there's something that prohibits us from doing it in person, but that will all be determined and um, we'll start to uh, make sense of that and understand specifically when the summit will take place and the format for the summit. But we plan on having it in 2023 and it will be Q3 or Q4. And then the last point here is at the summit, there'll be a special announcement for the grand prize cash award for the overall best experience of the competition for each age category. So if you are one of the finalists or if you're the top team for your SDG, you'll know, obviously, because we have to invite you to the summit. If the summit's in person, we're working on getting fundraising to fund your travel uh, and accommodations to the summit. Um whether that's in Geneva or New York or wherever it ends up being. If it's in person, if it's virtual, it's it's obviously going to be only online. So we're sorting through all that, but you'll know because you have to be invited to the summit, whether you're a finalist. Um, however, we're going to do the overall best experience of all 17 SDGs for each of the age groups, categories. We'll actually make that announcement literally on stage to surprise the the overall winners for each the winner for each age category so that's that's a very high level tie line it's pretty consistent with what we published originally back in february march on the website i know at one point we thought we'd have this summit you know five months after we launched it but we quickly with you know by by uh march april may we knew that we would have this summit in this year but that's a very high level the, the key things for you if you're a team competing on this is your submission you're done at the end of march because starting in April, we're going to start to look at the submissions. And we're going to go through a lot of this detail right now, but that's just a very high level. Okay. Um, if you have questions, you can type them in the chat. And Sam, why don't you pay attention to the chat and you can maybe ask some questions as we're going through this. I'll probably get to a lot of questions you have, but if you have something that's burning right now on something we said, please feel free to, to type it in the chat. Um, so... On the, what we're going to cover right now are these questions. I think we'll nail all of these pretty well for you. Uh, first, as a team lead, how do I submit my team's final VR creation for the judging on March 31st? So what do you actually have to do for us to start the process? What are the expectations for that submission? What should it look like? Uh, I mean, we've given you a lot of expectations as far as your experience you create, but what's the expectations in terms of, okay, when I submit something, who's going to look at it? What are they going to, how are they going to evaluate it, et cetera? What happens after you submit that creation? How do we then, the judges, who are the judges and how are the judges going to be evaluating these submissions to determine which is the one that they're going to award as a finalist and give some cash prize to? When will you be notified and whether you made it to the finals and when is the actual ceremony in which all the finalists will be announced and awarded the cash prizes? Some of that we top line there, but we'll go into a little bit more detail. So real quickly, before we jump into each of those questions, just at a high level to give everyone an update, we are at, um, Sam, you got to pay attention to the waiting room, please, because I think there's people that keep popping up. Or I don't know if we can remove the waiting room, but um, just at a high level, we're very happy with the results of this competition. I mean, we when we started this competition, we were wondering if we'd get a few hundred to make a good competition. We end up getting close to 1,200. Um, impressively, it was across you know nearly 70 countries. Uh, 
And those 1,200 individuals actually registered as teams. I don't know if they all converted over to teams, but we ended up having close to 260 actual teams that those 1,200 people were are part of. So that's a really healthy and good competition. Um, it means that per SDG, there's at least, you know, we're at least two or three competitor teams within each SDG. Some of them even have a lot more. I'll show you a little bit of that allocation in a second. Um, this, this is the, uh, the survey from the team registration database. So out of the 257 teams, these are the 17 SDGs and you can see the allocation. It's interesting. I mean, quality education has the largest, you know, lion's share. Um, gender inequality has 7.4%. And then, and then uh, everybody else is actually, I mean, it's relatively even allocation, which is interesting. We didn't really anticipate that. We thought maybe it would be like 80, 20, 20% 20 of the SDGs have 80% of the teams. This is good. We were worried about too many individuals wanting to focus on just specific SDGs and it gets lopsided, but it seems like we covered all the SDGs very well. So thanks to all of you. Um, some other details, this is the age group split. Now what you see on the left is the team leader only of the, uh, of the team that was um, uh, out of the team database. On the right is all 1200 individuals. So the reason you'd see a little discrepancy there is those 1,200 individuals obviously mixed up into teams and then the team demographics change. So the one on the left is kind of who's actually competing in this now. Um, and that also was really positive. You know, we're happy that there's a lot of 14 to 18 year olds because that was actually one of our targeted, key targeted groups. Um, we're, really, we're really happy with the split on, on male versus female. Um, you know, this is sometimes you get lopsided in STEM fields. Um, we feel like this is a good, uh, a good representation. I'd pay attention a little bit more to the right because the left is literally only the team leader, but that's also impressive. You know, as far as the person who's really carrying the torch for the team and the one who's leading the team out of the 200, 256, 257, you know, there's, there's a, a decent split there. Um, this is the level of experience. You know, any levels of experience could compete on this competition. You see the levels of experience, blue being no experience at all. We're actually particularly happy with the fact that, I mean, originally the reason we wanted to do this was get exposure out to individuals that could start to upskill themselves into metaverse or virtual reality and be aware that this is a coming profession. And so we're really thrilled to see a lot of individuals who had never even used virtual reality, who hopefully through this process, are excited about it and learn some great skill sets, were able to apply and practice their skill sets, had fun, and you know, feel like they're seeing a, a way to navigate into this as a, as a career or profession that could bring income. Some other survey results. Um, this is why people said they're competing in this competition across the nearly 1,200. So the vast majority, you know, nearly half of you said you did it to improve your knowledge on virtual reality and metaverse and, and pick up a relevant skill. Um, the second number one reason was you're passionate about the SDG that you chose. And you thought this was a really cool way to apply it. Um, this was the number two reason you selected. So if, you, if this was your second priority of why you did this competition. Um, and then the third priority. Notice the third priority is, is when the prize money gets into it. And that's usually what we see with these competitions. If you've ever run competitions, people usually do it for some austringent value, skill set, fun, being part of a community, building friendships, um, passionate about the cause. And the prize money is an element, but it's not the main driver. But we're going to be very happy as a nonprofit to give some good cash awards out for people. So um, as a team lead, if we get back to these questions, as a team lead, how do you submit your, your VR creation on March 31st? So when that date starts to roll around, our ultimate goal to evaluate team submissions is that the judges, and we'll talk about who the judges are, but the judges actually get into a virtual reality headset, load up whatever platform you did your environment in, and actually experiences it fully immersed the way you intended it to be experienced in a full VR um, experience. However, 
257 submissions um, will require us, and we mentioned this early on, if you look at the website, that we can't go through 257 virtual reality experiences. First of all, we don't want to, you know, you want to get in there and really spend some time as a judge experiencing it. You don't want to go in for 30, you know, for three or four minutes and then leave. We will actually want to really experience it. So in order to get to a manageable number, we're going to need to have a initial screening mechanism in order to filter and reduce the number of experiences to a more manageable quantity, which judges can then experience fully immersed in virtual reality. So for that, April 1st, your team will be asked to submit a video that introduces the team and highlights their experience in creation for their SDG. So we're going to go into this and, and get more specific here. But basically, the expectations for this video submission, because that's what we're really asking you to submit on April 1st, is you'll upload your video to a private drive and folder. We'll get in touch with you by the time you know late March runs around, and you as a team lead will be given a private folder. You will need to upload your team's video into that folder. That video can be published on YouTube. It can be published just as a video file. Um, maybe we'll make a private YouTube channel where we'll we'll put them. We don't want other teams to see other creations just yet. But ultimately, um, these are the specs on the video. Your video can be up to six minutes. If you think you can get your message across in three minutes, that's fine, but you have up to six minutes. And the guidelines are in this video. So you can do this. Um, you can do it as part of a Zoom meeting you record. You can do it as part of an iPhone where you take a video of each other. You can get it professionally produced, however you wanna do it. We're not really judging you on the quality, production quality of your video, okay? You can, it can be an amateur video. We're more, in, we're more interested in you giving us a little infomercial on what you did and how you did it. And out of the 256 videos we watch, we're gonna hopefully use that to say, you know what, there's a difference here. Everybody did a, gr a good job, but some people did a great job. And we can tell that by the videos. And those are the ones that we wanna filter down and actually go to the next step of looking in virtual reality at these experiences, okay? So in the introduction though, in your video, and um, we'll post this on our Facebook community channel page. These are the specific things we'd like you to do. We'd like you to first start off, that's why it says number one, where your team lead introduces themselves and the rest of the team members. And when we say introduction, you just spend a minute uh, talking about where you're from, what your ages are, what your careers, your background, how you learned about the competition, how you know one another, maybe a fun fact about you. We're just trying to get a little bit of, of a sense of who you are. Share your team's previous experience and background using the metaverse. You know, let us know if you've never used VR in the metaverse before and you just started because of this competition. Or let us know that you've been a professional in the industry for years and that it's what you do in your, in your day job, in your career. And you thought this competition would be fun, so you participated in it. Maybe you're a university student and it's part of a class assignment. So this is what we're looking to hear. Um, describe your team's overall thought process and approach for creating this experience in VR for your SDG. Share your team, how your team has collaborated to create this experience. You know, when you met, how often, how you generated ideas and how you ultimately formulated this concept and the strategy you used to bring this thing to life. So, you know, for that, um, we're just a little bit interested in like, you know, you introducing yourself and your team members saying like, yeah, we, we were interested in life below water, SDG number 14. And um, we got together as a group and started to ideate around concepts we could do in VR to bring education and awareness to that SDG. Um, we decided, you know, why don't we just tell a story about the quality of oceans in terms of pollution and some of the things that are affecting that SDG. And we wanted to put it more in like a story narrative. And so we created a story, or you might say we wanted to create a game and have users participate. We thought that was a good strategy. Just share with us a little bit about your approach of, of, of why you created the space the way you did. You're just, you're giving us a little context for what we're about to see when you take us on a tour. Next, um, you know, which SDG you selected and why, and what interested you about that SDG? So what was, what was your affinity to that SDG that made you passionate about selecting that SDG? And then most importantly, we want you to take us into your VR experience. 
Now, many of you learn that if you put on a VR headset and go through your experience or even do it on your desktop, because many of these platforms, you can do a, a pretty good version on your desktop, you could simply uh, just record yourself on your screen, taking us through your experience. You can, you can cast from your headset to a phone and then record on your phone or your computer the experience. Um, maybe we'll have an information session where we show you how to do this, but it's very straightforward to record from a headset onto some device, especially if you're accessing your VNR environment from a, from a desktop, you can just record your screen, right? So we just want you to take us into your world that you created and you don't have to show us the tour the way that maybe you would show it if you're going to really take someone through the whole process, because maybe the whole process takes 20 minutes to get through and you're only going to take us on a tour for two or three minutes. You're basically just going to take us through and give us a, a glimpse, kind of a drive by of, of what it looks like and, and what type of elements are in there. OK, and as you do it, we want you to highlight things that you did in that environment and methods you used to bring education, awareness, and empathy. So if you take us on a tour through the virtual reality environment you created and you bring us some, to some data and statistics about you know, SDG number 14, life below water around pollution in the oceans, you, know, you just highlight the fact that that was an educational element that you were, you were striving for. And maybe there's another part of the tour where it actually builds some emotional experience and some empathy, maybe through music or sound or graphics or special effects. And you're saying that was, you know, the, here's where we're trying to build some emotion and some empathy into this experience versus just all statistics and data, right? We just want you to highlight as you give us the tour on where and why you created it the way you created it, especially if the competition goals was education, awareness, interest, and empathy. And then the last thing we'd like to, you to do when you kind of close out your video is um, you just highlight some of the special techniques that you use that maybe we didn't notice in the video. You know, maybe use LIDAR. We had a session, information session on how to use an iPhone to use LIDAR to pick up an image. Maybe you did that pull, to pull images in. Tell us that. We might have thought you just pulled that graphic off of some, you know, clip art website, but you act, or 3D website, 3D object website, but maybe you actually created in Blender yourself or you pulled it in through LIDAR. Um, and then also there are certain techniques. I mean, you know, the Engage platform lets you actually have a pop quiz that pops up for someone who's going through the experience where you can ask them questions after they go through it to test their knowledge of what they learned. Maybe that's one of the things that you produced and you used that feature. So, you know, we're not asking you to quote unquote sell us your creation, but to some extent you should be selling us the creation. <laughs> you know, basically saying, just be proud of your work and say, hey, we did these really awesome things and just, you know, we're just getting familiar with it. Now, keep in mind, at some point, if your creation and experience moves forward after this built video filtering process, we will be able to go into this experience with you and you'll have more time to really take us through it and take us through all elements of it. We're excited to see that. The purpose of the video is just to help us understand like we're separating good from great. You know, the judges will watch these and be like, okay, that's really good. But if you look across all 256 submissions, you know, that's not one that we would probably go in and view in virtual reality because we can see the other videos and the other videos are great, are, are so much at a different level. We would prefer to explore those. Um, so that's, that's how we're going to use it for filtering. The judges will consider the dynamics of the team. So if a lot of the team doesn't have a lot of experience or, um, you know, it's a team that just met for the purpose of this competition, they put something together, you know, the judges will actually have um, consideration for the fact that all these teams aren't created equal. You know, we don't want this competition to be swept by professionals who have been working in this field for all these years. Obviously they know how to create things. So they have a head start and advantage versus others that are in the competition that maybe are learning for the first time. Doesn't mean we're gonna disadvantage professionals by any means. It just means that we're gonna try to balance the rewards to recognize that there's some people that did some extraordinary things in here. Some were professionals who were working the space and they blew our minds and it's amazing. And we want to show that at the UN summit, you know, and share it with the world and others. The really nice story about what they created is this is affecting them personally. This SDG is, is, is affecting them personally. And they really brought to life how that affect, how it's affecting them personally and whether they 
they whether they were completely polished and the environment was a really polished environment, maybe that doesn't matter as much because there's a really interesting story behind it that's powerful. You know what I mean? So that that's what we're trying to do is we're going to ask the judges to do is just keep that in consideration. Okay. So that's the video submission that will be due starting in April. Um, we don't want you guys to stress about creating a video. I mean, you might want to rehearse a few times so it comes across smooth because you only have the six minutes. But um, you know, it's it's really it's really just to give us a preview so we can uh, make a determination on who who are the the teams we want to move forward with with the actual in person or in VR experience. Okay, so after you submit your video, there will be a judging panel that's going to restart to review this. The judging panel is going to consist of individuals from Exponential Destiny, Samantha, myself, Marco, Juan, um, the individuals that many of you have seen on these information sessions or that we've met with you at some of the, the ITU events that we went to together. Um, we also have a nonprofit called the Virtual World Society. It is run and founded by Tom Furness. If, if any of you are in the virtual reality space for the last 30 years, you'll, you, you, you may very well know Tom. He's a professor at Washington State University or University of Washington, Washington State University. Anyways, he, he, he's one of the original grandfathers of virtual reality. He's a, he's a really established professional in the space. He's a really kind-hearted individual. He created this nonprofit. I'm on the board of this nonprofit with some other professionals from the industry. And uh, they've offered uh, as kind of unbiased judges to, um, to help us with the assessment process of the videos you know, because we have to go through 256 videos. So we think we have enough resources over the course of a couple months to get through all the videos and do fair justice and review them. Okay, in terms of what happens after you submit your videos, this judging process will take place for, you know, April, May, and, you know, April, May, June is when we're going to do the judging. During that time frame, after April 1st, when you submit, there's also going to be some opportunities potentially to take some of the experiences you've created that we like, that we think will move on into the finals, or at least a contender for the finals. And we have some opportunities with the United Nations to actually do some demonstrations to preview some of the experiences even before we have our Metaverse for SDG Summit in Q3 or Q4. For example, in May, there's the seventh annual forum on science, technology, and innovation around the SDGs in New York at the UN. And Samantha and I had a call with that group today. It's the group we've been working with. And um, we think it's feasible that we could actually have a space at that at the UN in New York where we actually can demo some of the uh, some of the experiences. Even if the judges haven't got through all the experiences and determine who the finalists are, we know that come April 1st, when you guys submit your videos, that we're going to start to see some real interesting things. And we might call you up and say, hey, uh, in May, there's this summit. We'd like to demo your experience to people attending this UN event. And so that will be exciting for you. Our goal is just to showcase your work that you did and find any opportunity, especially within the UN network. So we think that's real feasible that we'll be doing some things like that. Um, this one's not confirmed yet, but we're having, these are the types of discussions we're having. And we think it's Everyone's very excited about it, quite frankly. They they love the idea of the metaverse for SDGs that we ran through this competition and the fact that it's created by individuals like you, right? Okay, in terms of how the judging and evaluation process works, um, initially it's going to be the videos and then it will be in, in virtual reality, as we just described. As we put on the website from day one, if you think about it, this is more of a subjective interpretation versus objective interpretation. You know, empathy, awareness are kind of subjective things. Education, you could say, is a little bit more objective. But the judges, we're going to get a cross-representative group of people from a judging panel. Um, but it's a little bit more of a subjective interpretation. The things we're going to be looking for as judges is going to be just imagination and creativity. We highlighted this early on that you know, from day one, we said, if you're getting into virtual reality and just putting PowerPoint slides up for someone to walk through and look at PowerPoint slides, you're probably not going to do very well in this competition. We're looking to go way further than that. And that's why we've had 14 information sessions. You know, we had Caitlin Krauss from Stanford University talking about how to create social and emotional learning in VR. 
Um, Sam and I did some sessions where we highlighted, um, you know, design thinking, how to tell stories, uh, how to use animation techniques and produce theater in VR. I mean, so really we're trying to say the bar can be much higher, which many of you uh, I think are taking it there, but that's what we mean by creativity and imagination. Um, how you use immersive and experiential techniques to engage people. Um, this is a new medium for most of us from working in the space now for, for several years, ex especially with clients, uh, you know, schools that we work with as a nonprofit. We definitely had learned that VR is not the best way to experience everything. There, there are definitely uh, immersive and experiential um, elements or techniques that you can use that make VR a better way to experience something, but only if you use those techniques, right? And so we we're kind of looking at, did you, did you properly use the medium the best way? Uh, of course, how well did you educate people around the SDGs? We want people to feel good and maybe be entertained when they get in your environment, but they should be educated on what the real challenges are with the SDG and why it's such a problem for, for, for every person, right? Overall effectiveness as a tool for building awareness and interest and empathy. Your team's ability to do more with less. So um, we've said from the beginning, you, you do not have to invest a lot in hardware and software to be part of this competition. Um, you can actually create some amazing spaces where simplicity is the thing that ultimately works for you. You know, um, and uh, we're not judging. We're, we're going to try to normalize the curve on who has access to more advanced resources to do things in these environments. Um, and see, and we're impressed by people who used, you know, a, a platform that's out there, Engage, Spatial, one of these platforms is actually free. You can do a lot in those environments versus building something from scratch in Unity or something. Again, we're not going to disadvantage people that build something in Unity from scratch. We're just saying we're going to try to notice the fact that others have done something um, with, uh, with less. Uh, the originality design and creation of your digital assets. Uh, and again, we're, we're never saying to ourselves, do we like this person's idea for solving the SDG? That, that's not the criteria at all. We're not, we're, we're, we're asking how well did you educate, build awareness, interest, and empathy for the SDG? Not did you figure out a way to solve that big problem? You might have put some ideas for solving the problem because that was part of your research or that's part of the education element because there are people thinking about solutions and you introduce that to build awareness around solutions, but we're not actually looking for you to map out how to solve something, okay? Um, what will happen is in April, as we discussed, we will have, Exponential Destiny will have your 256 video submissions up to six minutes each. As we described in May and June, we will have filtered that down so that by May, or early June, we anticipate our judges will have selected one or up to three finalists for each SDG in the two age categories. So at a minimum, we'll have 34, 17 finalists times two. But at this stage, we might actually have a couple others, you know, we might be two or three people, two or three teams deep per SDG because we're not awarding the finalists at this point. We're just deciding who we get into virtual reality and look at for ourselves in VR, all right? So we're at least gonna have, I, I would anticipate that we'll probably have at least two per SDG because we're trying to identify by getting into a headset and looking at your experiences, who ultimately deserves the grand prize for each SDG. And we will be doing that in May or June. Now, how's that gonna take place? Well, when you get notified that you made the filter, you know, from April to May, and that you've been selected for your SDG as is one the judges would actually like to get into VR to be part of. We'll schedule a Zoom call with you. You'll meet the judges. You'll explain your experience, and then we'll all put on a headset and meet you in there. And you'll take us through it. And that's how we'll do the judging process. We'll walk through everything that you've created. Hopefully, it doesn't take too much time to do each one. But we'll, you know, at that point, we're really first of all we're excited to see what you did and put on a headset and get into these environments. But we feel like we need to be in the environment and experience to really decide, okay, this is the top team. And, that, and that's basically where we're going to get next. Um, from that experience, judging will be done by the Virtual World Society and Exponential Destiny for the videos. 
But then when we get to the in virtual reality experience, we think at that point, there's a good chance we'll, we'll start involved. We're, we're talking to the ITU about having other agencies from the UN, like the World Health Organization, UNICEF, you know, these other agencies that actually have an affinity specifically to one of the SDGs. They're actually experts in the SDGs. What a better judge than to have someone from, you know, the World Health Organization get into the SDG, what is it, number three, health and well-being. They get into that experience and they are the ones that help us determine out of the three finalists who's the one that's the top for that SDG. So, you know, people are busy and the UN agencies, people are busy, but we are talking about the ITU, about reaching out to these other agencies and seeing if there's individuals from these agencies that would like to be part of our summit when we ultimately have it, but also could help us with some of the judging. Um, the, the ITU also has a global youth envoy or, or community. When we went to Kigali, Rwanda for the ITU summit, it was part of this Generations Connect. It was five, they have 5,000 youth leaders around the world that are part of their community. We plan on asking some of them to help us with the judging at that stage. You know, so our goal is just to get a, a cross-representative, diverse sample of people that can come in. It shouldn't be all VR experts that do the final judging, like from the Virtual World Society. It shouldn't be all SDG experts. You know, there should some be some people that are just everyday citizens out there that get into the environment and give us some feedback. So we plan on getting a little bit of all of the above to try to go in and, and, and make a decision of who deserves the, the final prizes. So that's how that will take place. As far as when your team will be notified of the finals or not, it's kind of what we discussed. July or August is when we will have been in virtual reality, looking at your experience. And then ultimately there'll be a consensus among the judges. Okay, for SDG number one through 17, these are the top teams. Uh, there might be honorable mentions which means the judges might say, you know what? We figured out at least who the top team is for each SDG, but quality education had 30 teams and, and SDG number seven only had three teams. And we actually think quality education, there's at least the top five teams within quality education that did extraordinary jobs. So even though we identified who did the best job for quality education, the best team, we are going to give an honorable mention like for second and third place that we'd like to award a cash prize to as well. You know, um, again, if we went strictly by, let's just give out prizes to the top 17, I don't know, some people might've done some pretty amazing things and we'd be like, well, we limited ourselves. We said, we're only going to do the top team for each SDG, but some of these SDGs, they're two or three deep with some great experiences. You know, our, our job is to surface great, great experiences out of this model. And so we might add on more than the 17. Um, in terms of the ceremony and the cash prizes and all of that detail, um, we will announce, we will know and start to announce when we're going to have this Metaverse for SDG Summit. We'll probably have to announce that in the next two months because to reserve the venue, if it's going to be in person, we've got to reserve a venue and we have to lock ourselves in. I will tell you right now, we're looking at New York with the UN and there's even been discussions with the mayor's office in New York. They want to be involved. And um, I think that is starting to look like the venue. We might decide that we should have it going on concurrently in two different locations, simply because of travel for some of the teams. Maybe it'll make life a little easier. So we're looking at options, but right now we are looking at an in-person event versus just doing it virtually. Of course, there will be a metaverse platform, a virtual platform where everyone can attend and will live stream from the in-person event, assuming we have the in-person event as well as the, the uh, virtual one. Okay. Um, the what's next? Okay. This is kind of the key thing. As we share with you right now, we have sponsors that have provided us close to $200,000 at a minimum. We've been saying this all along. At a minimum, we're going to allocate that two hundred thousand dollars as prize money. Um, now, the allocation has to go across seventeen SDGs times two because there's two age categories, right? We are going to be raising money um, for the next until we have the summit. We're going to be raising money for more sponsors. 
we do have proposals out to some really large organizations that were asking to sponsor the summit that we want to have. That would include funding to fly people into that summit. That will be determined of whether we have it in person or we do it virtually. We're optimistic that we will have the summit in person and the 17 finalists will be asked to fly to, if we have it in New York, to come to New York for the summit. You could do it virtual if you prefer to do it virtually, but if you wanna be there in person and we're trying to look for funding to fly you in and put your accommodations up for that as well. So we're working on all that and we're working very hard on that. Um, Again, we are, with the fundraising, we're looking for the summit with some rather large organizations. I'll keep it confidential who we're talking to, but these are big global organizations that are interested in potentially funding this, um, the whole summit, the Metaverse for SDG Summit at the UN with the ITU agency and other agencies and, and us. We are asking them to put more money into the prize purse. So, you know, we'd like to keep that a little bit of a secret. Maybe there won't be any big surprise, but we'd, we, what I'm hoping is that we get to the summit and you you all as teams that competed on this, you know that there's at least $200,000 that's being allocated, but who knows, maybe we double or triple that and you don't find out until we actually award it to you on stage, the fact that we, we raise more money. Um, so we'll see, but at least you know there's $200,000 to be allocated. So here's the key thing. Judges have full autonomy to determine the allocations of the prize money based on the merit of the team's submissions that they looked at in virtual reality versus the evaluation criteria that we've gone through. So in other words, there's no formula for how a judging, how the judges allocate the $200,000. They will do it based on merit. So there could be a scenario where they go through this, all these experience and say, and come out of it as a judging group and say, you know what? There are teams in each of the SDGs that rose to the top here. And each SDG or the majority of the SDGs all have really quality experiences, like top experiences um, that we're impressed by. We're gonna do an even allocation of the $200,000 because we think that's what teams deserve, okay? There could be another scenario where they say, you know what? Everybody did a, you know, put in a great effort, uh, put in a really good effort. But it's clear that there is that 80% of the $200,000 is going to go to 20% of these teams. You know, the 80 20 rule. You've heard about the 80 20 rule that there's 20% of the teams out of the 256 teams, 20% of those teams did a better job than the 80% of those teams. And therefore, they're going to get 80%. Those 20% of the teams are going to get 80% of the $200,000. So we're not, you know, we're going to do this very diplomatic. We're going to do it in a way that makes sense. We don't mean to hurt people's feelings, but we want to be fair for people who created the experiences and really got in this to win this. Um, it doesn't mean that you spent the most money to do this and had the fanciest thing, as we described. You could win this competition just based on the fact that this is a SDG you're passionate about. It's affecting you personally, and you did an exceptional job to bring it to life with the tools that were at your disposal. So we're taking all that into consideration. Um, you know, I don't, there could even be a scenario where we look at the 256 submissions and we say, you know what, there's really only two teams in here that we think just are like leaps and bounds above everybody else. So we're going to give 80% of the money to the two top finalists. And the 20% is going to just be allocated to, uh, to the other um, 16 SDGs. Again, it's there's no there's deliberately and by design not supposed to be a specific rule on allocation because otherwise that would force our hand to allocate based on a rule and we're going to allocate based on merit based on the experiences themselves that will keep it exciting too because until you're on stage you really don't know until the award ceremony you really don't know uh how much you have the potential to win if you became a finalist you might be pleasantly surprised you might be disappointed you might be disappointed um Judges can also determine, like we said, the honorary winners. So in a particular SDG, there's the top finalists, but as we described, there might be others within that SDG. So the judges decide there's money that we're going to allocate to the runner-up for SDG number 14 or the third place winner for SDG you know, number 14 because there were such good examples within that SDG. And yes, that would take money, the allocation, away from others if we have a fixed amount. 
but again, we'll allocate based on work product, what people produced against the criteria. Um, and then lastly, there's, as we described, there's the best experience of show. Again, there will be two winners, one for the 19 year old and above, and one for the 14, 18 year olds that are getting the grand prize of you, you produced in your age group, the best experience than anybody else, according to the judges in the eyes of, in the views of the judges against the criteria. And those two winners will get the most prize money, you know, Again, they might get 80% of it, or they might just be getting 10% of it, but 10% of it's a lot if if you're trying to allocate across 17, right? So that's just uh, details on the way that the logic we're using for allocating the prize money itself. And hopefully you guys can appreciate that. Um, it, will be, it will be unbiased. Um, if there's anyone we feel has a conflict of interest, in the judging, meaning maybe a judge knew a particular team or was part of an organization or just had some relationship with one team, they'll be they'll be asked to recuse themselves from the judging. Um, or they will, I mean, the judges we have are all quality integrity people. They'll, they'll, they themselves will say they're going to recuse themselves from the judging. Um, but we'll keep this very fair. There's nothing uh, suspicious about the judging process. It really is. Other than the fact that it's subjective, it's not objective. So you might not agree with some people may not agree with all the judges final determinations because it's not a perfect science but we're going to do we're going to do our best so with that said let me stop sharing the screen and i think what we'll do is we've got about 10 minutes left and sam do we have any questions that people put in the chat and then we'll let people raise their hands if they have questions for those that joined us today as well yeah, so we got one earlier that asked if the VR, the in VR experience was a different video or it was a part of the same six minute video, but I responded that it is just one video you're submitting. So it's that whole introduction and the VR all together in those six minutes. Yeah. And then we just got another one that says, when are we submitting the actual VR experience? Just right now. Well, the, the, the actual VR experience, you'll produce a video for it in by April 1st. Um, and we will be re reaching out to you once we screen the videos in like a 30 day period in order to say, Hey, you made it. We're going to start getting into your actual VR experience. Okay. So it depends on when we get through the videos. Um, some of you might be a little nervous saying like, wow, six minutes. Is that enough time? Because, you know, Marcus and Sam and exponential destiny was saying that we need to introduce ourselves, our team members, give a little tour, talk about our methods. Uh, describe the techniques we use, et cetera. That's okay. I mean, if we want to ask more questions, if we see you make a video and we, we're like, this is really interesting, but we need more information, we'll reach out to you and say, we need more information. You know, we'll do an interview with you. So don't think your video is the, if, if your video sparks our interest, or at least let me just be very candid with you. What we're looking for is there's those that really put in an effort and there's those that just didn't. You know, and by the way, if you didn't put a lot of effort, there's no criticism here. People are busy. You know, you have your day jobs. Some of you maybe only spent a few weekends producing your environment that you ultimately submitted, where others spent a lot of time. We just think that's going to become really clear when we just screen the videos. You know, and, and we'll we'll cut, that will help us separate those that we felt were trying to put an A effort in, but for whatever reason, busy schedules, maybe some of the interest atrophied over time within your team. And it ultimately didn't come out to be that interesting of a creation. We still hope you learned a lot. We hope that we met our objective here, was which, which was to get you in VR, get you exposed to how to use it for education. We're not a big proponent of virtual reality for every use. We actually think it could be detrimental to society and for some use cases. We're only passionate about using it for the power of education and building awareness around social causes. So that's that we'll be very happy, even if you didn't, even if what you produce isn't all that spectacular. That's okay. We're not we're not upset, of course, we just hope you learned something. But the videos will help us. It, common sense tells us that of 256 videos, there's definitely going to be a portion of those, probably the minority portion that we're going to say, like, these are the ones we got to go into VR and look at, you know. Go ahead, Sam. So we got, if we make it to the VR experience review, what headsets are going to be used? Uh, Quest Pico, I'm assuming during judging? Yeah, if you built it for a specific platform, we'll use the one that you tell us we need to use because we don't want to disadvantage the experience if you're like, well, you have to really use, you know, an HTC Vive headset. 
I'm assuming that viewing it, well, we'll see. I don't want to make any assumptions. I, I know that the majority will be Oculus Quest uh, because that's from a price point standpoint, that's what, you know, that's what many of teams used. But yeah, if you use the particular headset that you're like, look at to view mine and we want to view it, you'll tell us that. As a matter of fact, I should have added that to one of your video. One of the video things is what platform that you use. So we'll add that um, or hardware. But uh, yeah, we don't want to disadvantage. If you say, hey, to really get the full extent of this, you got to put on this particular headset. You might even say it's, you know, I just got the Oculus or the MetaQuest Pro that has the front facing cameras. I don't, don't go that far because those are expensive. They're $1,300. We're going to have to get all the judges, these headsets. But yeah, we, we're going to try to be flexible with what hardware you use. Okay, then next one we got was, are there any accommodations being made for teams that made their experience in alt space VR? Um, well, you can make your space in anything. You could have used spatial engage. You could have built it from scratch in Unity. You could use alt space VR gatherings. Um, you're just going to tell us which platform you used it in, and we'll get into that platform to use it. So if you did alt space VR, there's... But it's been it's, it's been discontinued March 10th. Oh, you're yeah, you're right. It did, didn't it? Well, how is everybody getting access to it then? That was my question. Like, I, I, I mean, it's not going to affect our team directly, but when the announcement was made, it was just something that yeah. occurred to me that there may well be teams who have chosen to use it that come March 10th might be in a bit of a pickle. Did Altspace VR, when they canceled, they said, we're just not going to support this platform? I don't know. I haven't looked into it in, in a great deal of detail. I have to, I have to assume that it was one of those situations where Altspace VR says, we're not going to develop this platform any further. So don't, you might not want to invest too much time in this because it's not something we're going to maintain moving forward. But it I'd seems be a bit more dramatic than that. Oh, really? Like they turned yeah. everybody? Oh, that sucks. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I don't know about that then. I mean, if we can't get access to the space, that's going to, I guess the thing went away if that's really what happened. Um, you know, usually when you create these spaces, you have all your digital assets outside the platform. So maybe it's something you still got three months, you know, you still got two to three months left. You could maybe port it over into something. I imagine teams started to do that when the other one shut down. But thanks for highlighting that. Yeah. Who is it? Is it Altspace VR? That is that face? Is that Meta's? It's no, Microsoft. That's Microsoft, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they're too busy with chat GPT. They don't need to do this stuff anymore. Yeah, and it's some kind of Microsoft Mesh they're eventually replacing it with, but I, I, yeah. Yeah, Microsoft Mesh, because Accenture made an announcement with Microsoft Mesh and the SDGs. Not the SDG. Yeah, was it it? They, they, not with the SDGs, but they made an announcement at the World Economic Forum last week that they're building out some social cause environment on Mesh, Microsoft Mesh. Um, okay, thanks for highlighting that. Anybody else or any other questions? There's another one that says, if we need help with something we don't know about the platform you're using in VR, like Engage, can someone help us like entering our project before the official submission? Yeah, if you email, I mean, we first encourage you to go to YouTube videos because it's really, you'd be very surprised if you do a question if, you're, if, if your question is, is there something you can help me with Engage in terms of how to use Engage platform? We ourselves have published two or three information sessions specific to Engage. You also can Google or go to Engage's website. They actually have very easy to follow resources there on how to do things. They have tutorials. You can go to watch YouTube videos. A lot of users create their own. So there's a lot of user generated content or tutorials that people have created. I mean, that's how we learned. Um, but if you really get stumped, you, you, if you reach out to us at our, our SDG metaverseprize.org email address, um, we do have people on our team that maybe can answer questions for you. I don't know. We, we got some people on our team that even liked, I mean, a, some people in the community have reached out and they, we've actually given them a private tutorial just because we're, we're, you know, we like doing this stuff. So. Okay. And then another question is, is it okay if we submit the project in Engage VR with the hopes to improve the quality with the game engine like Unity? Yeah, you know, what is it? Unity, I know Spatial just recently announced that they have a relationship now with Unity that you can, they have a, they announced their creator, quote unquote creator, which is this thing in Spatial VR, that platform Spatial that lets you bring in Unity elements, just like Engage has something like that. So yeah, um, if you've done that, if the question is, 
I don't know. What's the question? Is the question, can we do that? Because of course you can do that. You can do whatever you want to do. All we're interested in is the final experience that you created. We're just, only thing we're saying is you don't have to do that. So don't think you're disadvantaged if you didn't bring in Unity elements into the Engage VR platform. Someone, if someone has, someone has a question, Diego? Yes, thank you very much. It's just that uh, uh, I was the uh, one that I that made the question about Unit. And it's basically what I was trying to ask you, like, for example, uh, we developed the project in, you know, for example, in Engage VR, uh, just to, to show you, like, the idea of what we want to achieve. And later, uh, it helps to improve Unity to, you know, to achieve the best quality that we can with, you know, with virtual reality, I don't know. If it will like like okay to submit it, will engage VR and later. Oh, okay. I, don't know how I understand. Works. Yeah, I understand now. Yeah, I think. I mean, our goal is you have the intellectual property of what you created. It's yours because we're a nonprofit running a competition. But when we have our summit at the at the with the ITU with UN agencies, let's say we end up having it like we're talking right now in New York at the UN in Q3, Q4, and I think we're gonna have a lot of opportunities using our network to have feature some of the work and some of you, some of your work, some of what you've done at other UN events, like the one happening in May for the Technology Innovation Summit at the UN in New York. You know, like I said, we had that call today. I think I think that's gonna happen. And I think for the next 24 months, we'll probably be invited to a lot of UN events to uh, to be have a you know to have a booth in the lobby where we're showing some of this stuff. I mean, they really love that community. Really likes this, especially when they see actual. SDGs that you've created in these environments. So I think the more you refine your, the more you refine what you've created into, you know, if you take it from good to great, from Engage VR into Unity, during the course of the competition, I think that's great because if you end up being a finalist and we want to showcase you, you know, you're getting prize money and you're showcased at the UN summit. When you come to the UN summit, if we have it in person, the the, the summit we want to do at the UN with the ITU, um, we don't just want you to come up on quote unquote on stage and get the prize money and we all acknowledge your work. We're actually gonna have like a three day, we're planning on having like a three day summit where we demo everything you've done. And and we find other UN events like the technology summit in May where we demo what you've done. So the better you can make it to be more impressive, that floats all boats because everybody wins because then important people in the UN delegates and others will be able to actually see the real power of this technology to bring to life these SDGs. So we're really excited if you keep working on this. Continue to ameliorate your designs past April 1st. You know, some of you might get to a point where we love your concept, but we got to polish it up a little and get it ready for showtime. So we determine that you're a winner, but then we want to actually work with you to make it even more polished by the time we have the summit in in you know in Q3, Q4. You know, because then we're, you know, we're we're putting our game faces on at that point to just, you know, to just wow everybody with these powerful expressions of the SDGs. I think the one thing that we're struggling with is we thought, like, should we limit people to a software platform and to a headset, a hardware platform? So that way, when we finally get to the award ceremony, we can demo all this in the same environment. And then the reason we decided not to is, one, we didn't want to limit people. And two... The ITU agency we're working with is responsible for interoperability. And so part of what we talked to the secretary general of the ITU, um, who just, that leadership position just changed from the previous secretary general to the new secretary general. Uh, Ms. Doreen Martin Bogdan is the new secretary general. She's an American. Um, I've known the previous secretary general for years and we have a great relationship with Doreen because she's the one who invited us to Kigali, Kigali Rwanda for the ITU summit because she was she was leading that group within the ITU around Generations Connect. But the thing that we thought was interesting was what a great starting point for the ITU because their mission is to try to create global connectivity around new emerging technologies that connect people like the internet, like AI, and now the metaverse. And so we said, this will be a great way to show the interoperability and the lack of because we're going to have 17 winners that are all on different hardware, different platforms. Some did in Unity, some did in, you know, it's going to be a mess, quite frankly, as far as sharing. But by design, it's a mess because that's the starting point for where the UN, it's almost like research for them. Like, okay, 
we get it. It's right in our face. Like this is this is the interoperability that currently exists in this space. And people will realize the issues with interoperability. You have this great metaverse we could create with all these experiences, but the reality is there is no metaverse because you have to jump into different software and different headsets sometimes to see all these things. And so that's kind of what's special about this, doing this with the ITU is it's actually something that from that point forward, they're going to work on just like they worked on with trying to get people on global standards and interoperability of the internet. So good questions though. Any, any other, we're about, we started late, so we're just about an hour into this, um, but there's no rush. We're here for you guys. So if you have any other comments or questions. Um, to contact us, you use the info at sdgmetaverseprize.org email address, the one that's on the, the website. Basically, that goes to Sam and myself, our inboxes, as well as a couple others. Okay. Thank you very much, everybody. Appreciate the time today. And we'll we'll be having we'll still be having biweekly information sessions. Some of the sessions at this point forward might just be Q and A. We won't, we don't know if we need to have a lot of guest speakers as much as we did before up to this point. Sam, thank you so much for all your work because Sam was really the champion who arranged the 14 information sessions, all the experts we had on, everything that we did. So hopefully a lot of you use that. We heard good feedback from many of you in the community that was a good, a good resource for you. It wasn't meant to be the only resource, but it was a good resource for you. Okay. Thanks everybody. Bye-bye.